Hi, this is Nell Tharp, and I got a request for um, a video on pocket tears. So a pocket tear is when there is a deep tear in the perineal body, but it's behind the hymen. So the, the external surface of the perineum is intact. And I have set up a model um, using a fabric to demonstrate the anatomy and talk about it. I have not tried suturing this model, so um, it'll be an adventure for all of us. Um, I was trying to think of how I could set it up using a tissue model, um, and I have some ideas, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet. So we're going to give it a go with the fabric model, and hopefully it will at least be able to explain um, the tear and the anatomy and how it needs to be closed, um, even if it doesn't look like the real thing. So I'm all for models and simulations. So let's give it a go and we'll see how it turns out. I make no promises. All right, we'll go to the workstation. And here's the model. The model is a vulva. Um, the hymen is right here. So this would be the fourchette or vestibule or what I prefer to call as the, the sublabial folds. It doesn't actually look like this, um, but I'm using what would be the cervix in a birthing model to be the hymen for the purposes of our demonstration. I've added two strips of fabric. So one comes from the top down and around. This would be the bulbocavernosus muscle. The pink behind, this is the vagina and the vaginal um, rugae. And then we have uh, the transverse perineal muscle here uh, behind the hymen. And what tends to happen, and I'm gonna put my fingers behind just to provide a little bit of support. I'll see if this will work, is that the tear tends to go down in between the bubble cavernosus and transverse perineal so that they're completely pulled apart. And what we need to do is we need to join them together again. So um, the depth of the pocket will be explored. If there's any bleeders, we may need to place a figure of eight stitch uh, on the side. Um, and this is typically stitched in uh, a couple of layers. So going down deep, um, and I'm gonna, I don't, think, I don't think using the needle holder will actually be helpful for this. Um, but maybe it will. I'll give it a try and see what happens. Um, so I would go and I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna use tissue forceps uh, just because that way you will have better visibility. I'm gonna go down deep and I'm gonna take a stitch in the bulbocavernosus first and then deep in the transverse perineal muscle and pull that up. And, and I would have already placed my stitch, so I'm just gonna tuck this um, out of the way and put a clamp on it so I don't have to stop and tie a knot. These are the joys of simulation is that it's not real tissue, you can experiment with it. If it doesn't work out the way you like, you can always just take it out and try it again. So now I'm gonna place a second stitch again going into the bulbocavernosus muscle and then bringing it across to the transverse perineal muscle. So I'm knitting them back together gently and we'll see how that's pulling together. And you can see that this side is adhering and this side is still free. And I may need to do two layers. So, um, and what I mean by two layers is I'm gonna do one that's fairly deep, depending on how deep the pocket goes. And then I'll do one that's more shallow. Um, and it can be hard to see. So if your client has good anesthesia, by all means use tissue forceps uh, to stabilize tissue and provide you with greater visualization. Um, and do a new assessment after each stitch. You're gonna need a relatively small needle to be able to fit in that pocket, but usually a bigger needle will not fit. I think I need one more stitch on this side, and then I will reassess. Um, 
where I want the next stitch to be. So I, this one was just in the bulbo cavernosus. And let's tuck that down a little bit. There we go. All right. So now I've got it pulled back together somewhat, but you can see there's still a pocket here. So I'm going to do a second layer using the same stitch, but coming back um, across more superficially. And taking care that I don't lock a stitch. And that I've secured all areas that might be bleeding. And I will say the angle of this is a little bit challenging because I have a solid table under me. Um, if you have such a tear, I would strongly urge you to uh, break the bed or otherwise have the woman's uh, or the client's or the birthing person's bottom all the way at the uh, edge of the, of the bed. So this would close this pocket tear again. The hymen would have been adherent up here with it. Sometimes uh, it will be that both of these muscles have pulled away from the hymen and there's not a lot of tissue back there. That would be a bigger challenge. When I have seen these tears occur most often, it's with perineal massage. I am not an advocate of this type of perineal massage as the birth is approaching. Uh, if people want to do it in advance of that, then um, to help stretch and loosen the tissues, that's fine. But once the head is starting to distend it, I like to not touch this area at all, um, other than to provide support if needed. So when I get done, I'm gonna bring my needle back up and then depending on whether there's a vaginal tear, et cetera, then I'll, I'll determine what I'm gonna do um, once I have this stitch up and in the vagina. And of course, I don't have the vaginal mucosa coming all the way. Out. So I'm going to stop right there, and I'm not sure if that will provide what um, the person requesting it needed. Um, I will work on doing a similar model with pieces of meat. Um, I think it will work, but I'm not ready to do it just yet. So I hope that was helpful. Um, feel free to uh, put comments. Um, if it wasn't, or if there's additional questions, and uh, you can always reach out to me at uh, midwifeworkshops at gmail.com. This is Nell Tharf. Thanks so much for watching.